Hello, and welcome to this tutorial. In today's video we will go through how to set up a connection between a Siemens S7-1200 PLC and a Modbus simulator using Modbus RTU protocol. The PLC will be used as the master, and the simulator as the slave. I have already made a project and I will now add my PLC to it. To do so I click on Add New Device. Then I choose an unspecified 1200 CPU. If I now click on Detect, it will start search for my PLC with the RS485 module. Of the PLC security settings we want to go without anything that can potentially block the communication. Now that we got our PLC added to the device and networks view, we want to double click it. Then go to the protection and security tab. If we then scroll down a bit we will find a box to check that says permit access with put get communication from remote partner. Then we want to go to system and clock memory, and enable both system memory bits and clock memory bits. I will use the memory by 800 and 801, so it won't collide with any other memory bits. If we now click on the RS485 module we can change the communication settings. But to communicate to the simulator we don't need to change anything, so I will stick with the preset values. We can now go to the main block and do some programming. If we open up the Instructions tab, then under Communication we find a map called Communication Processor. In here we will find the Modbus map with the Modbus RTU blocks. We will need to add one Modbus COM Loads block, and one Modbus Master block. The Modbus COM load block will basically just load the RS485 module settings. On the request input we can add the first scan bit. This will make the block just give its settings the first scan of the PLC. For the port input we want to find our RS485 module in the list. And baud rate and parity we want to set to the same as we did in the devices and networks view. And the Modbus data block input we want to add our Modbus master's data block that TIA portal made for us. On the Modbus master block's request input, we can add the clock 1 Hz. This will make the block request every second to read or write from the slave. For the other inputs we can click on the block and press F1 on the keyboard to open up a help menu. Modbus address is basically which slave we want to read from or write to. If we type in value 0 then the block will request to all slaves connected. Else if we want to just request to one specific slave, we choose a specific slave ID. I want to write to Modbus slave ID 5, cause that's what I will set my simulator to.
If we click on mode, we will see how we program the other inputs. Since I want to write multiple holding registers, I will be looking at this column. The mode should be set to 1. And the Modbus first address is 40,001, and can go all the way up to 65,535. Since I want to write from the first Modbus address, I will type in 40,001. Data length is for how many addresses we want to write. So if I go for 10 here, it will write from 40,001 all the way up to 40,010. For the data pointer input, I want to make a new global data block. This is where we add the PLC's tags we want to write. I will make an array of integers with the limit of 0 to 9, which will give me 10 integer tags that I can write. To give tags in a data block an address we need to right click the data block and go to properties. Here we want to uncheck the box which says Optimize Block Access. If we then compile the block all the tags will be given a specific address. Now the last thing to do is to just drag our data block to the data pointer input of the Modbus master block. I will now compile and download everything to the PLC. I am now online and monitoring the PLC's main block. As you can see the calm load block is done, and the master block is requesting every second. In the Modbus simulator we want to go to Setup and click on Slave Definition. Here we want to write the slave ID, which is the same as the master block's Modbus address input. The function tab should be set to holding register, which have the same data address as 40,001. And we want to write a data length from 0 to 10. We then want to go to connection and make a connection to the PLC. Here we want to make sure the connection setup match the settings from our RS485 module. Then we also want to choose which COM port the USB is connected to. To find which COM port we're connected to we want to open up Device Manager. And under the COM and LPT tab we can find where our USB is connected. We can then open up our data block and start monitoring it. If I now modify a value in my data block the master block will request the simulator and send the value. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe.